Salutations and good morrow everyone and welcome to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now, this game, some of you may have seen, I played on an earlier stream on the channel, but I thought what I would do is actually go through and play the game a little bit on a Let's Play, give a review of it, things I like, things I don't like, and at the end of the video, give it an overall sim score from 1 to 10, saying how much I would recommend this game and how much I think you guys would enjoy it. So, let's hop right into the game here and let's have a good time in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Okay, here we are. Okay, so to start off, I want to just give a little bit of a backstory of what I've done so far in the game. First of all, when you join this island, you get greeted by Tom Nook, a raccoon that I believe is Satan, and he tells you that he wants you to come to a deserted island, he has this package for you, you're gonna come here, everything's gonna be great. You show up with two other guys and you're like, awesome, this is perfect. And then he's like, here, go find a place to slap down your tent. You slap down your tent, bada bing, bada boom, all of a sudden you owe him money. And you have to pay him back all this money and stuff. You go through, you get more neighbors, you build a museum. And next thing you know, you're just in this wildly immersive game that you have tons of fun playing and is super addicting. Let's get in. Let's show you guys a little bit of the things inside of the game. So first of all, you have your house. You start with a tent. You get to upgrade it. I've upgraded my house um, twice. So from a tent to a house to an upgraded house. Um, that's where I'm at. Here's my house. Not very much in it. Not very much in it. Um, I haven't really done a lot for decorating inside of the house. I kept it pretty simple, kept it pretty basic for right now. Um, I've been focusing more on my community, which is another cool thing about this, is this game's a lot about community, um, instead of focusing on my own house. So we're going to go ahead and take off here. Okay, so everything you see is interactable. I could pick these flowers, I could cut down these trees. This is my workbench. You have a vast array of new things that you can craft in this game. Crafting, I would give this game a 10 out of 10 for crafting because there are so many things you can craft with. Apparently I can make a recycled can thumb piano. That's cool. Didn't even know I could do that. Um, but yeah, you get all sorts of different tools and furniture and tons of things that you can craft throughout this game. You can customize your character, you can customize your outfits, you can customize pretty much in everything inside of your house. A lot of things in this house, a lot of things in this game, or rather, you can customize. Okay, what I've recently done, what these are here, are these are my little houses. I'm having new neighbors come in. Um, one of my neighbors is already here, this lady, I like to call her Hamburger Head. Um, she looks like a hamburger. The back of her head looks like a hamburger. I will show you guys her in a little while. And over here we have my Billy, the Billy Goat. He lives in this house. Oop. This is another cool thing about the game. This is my inventory space. Okay, so when you start, you get um, 24 slots for your inventory. When you get it completely, actually, I think it's 20 slots. Yes, yeah, 20 slots, and then you get 10 more, giving you 30. Run across my little bridge here to find the house that's actually built, and here we are. This is one of the first houses that gets built. This is my newest neighbor. All this stuff is all... Everything is done by you. Where the houses get placed, where your neighbors get placed, how all the furniture looks, it is all you in this game. It's fantastic. It gives you plenty of uses for any sort of creativity that you have, and you can take it as far as you want to. Um, there's vast ways to explore and run around and do multiple things. The inventory is is easy to use, um, and you have lots of different items to interact with. But probably my favorite part about this game is the collecting of everything, right? So you get to collect fossils, which is that's what's on this uh, this little guy right here. This X that marks the spot on the ground, or star, I should say. This star right here. Oops, if I could actually dig in the right spot. There we go. This is a fossil, right? You can collect fossils, you can collect bugs, and you can collect fish. And what you do with those is you put them inside of a museum. This is a little bit further in the game, and I've done uh, quite a few days of farming in this game in order to get to this point. Um, this game takes a while. That's the one downfall that I see with this game, is that things in this game... If you're looking for instant gratification, this game is not for you. This game takes time to play. Um, this game, it's so intuitive and it makes you spend so much time. Oh God, I just planted a money tree, I think. I may have just planted a money tree on accident. I'm okay with it though. It was only a thousand bells. Anyway, 
I haven't talked to her yet, I don't really know. Oh, here's another cool little thing that happens in the game. Um, let's see, where's my slingshot? Slingshot, hold. Oop, I'm not lined up. These little packages here. Oop, come on. And one more time. Third time's the charm, nice. You have little balloons that float on by, right? That you're like, oh, look at this, what is this? And you pick it up and it's a present for your guy. I don't have any room in my pockets, let's swap it with... Um, we're just going to drop this seashell for right now. Okay. So, but this is, let's get to my favorite part of the game. Right inside here, right inside this museum. This is my favorite part of the game. This is a collection of everything you've spent time collecting throughout the game. Whether it's fish over here, which is fishing. You have bug collecting, which is right over here. Or your um, artifacts and fossils that are going to be down here. So, we'll talk to the little hootie hoo blather owl. Blathers, what is up, my dude? Yeah, you're sleeping. I know. How may you be of service? I would like you to assess my fossil that I just got, please. It's right here. Go ahead and get him to assess that. He's going to look at it. He's going to get all excited. See? He's all excited. And this is a... Pelisio body. Okay, superb. Splendid. A rare fossil that we do not have yet in our class collection. Yes, we would like to donate it. Okay, perfect. Okay, this guy talks a lot. That's the other thing. There's a lot of text boxes in this game, and you have to read it all. Um, I like voice acting. I like when there's actually people talking in the game. But I like the cuteness of the little... That they're doing while they're talking so it adds to it they do have different voices of blah 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 that change through each character that you speak to that's just ha this just happens to be what blather sounds like but personally for me i enjoy when people read out what they're saying as well um so you don't have to sit here and read the text boxes because i'm a lazy reader i'm not a huge fan of reading long text boxes so for that i give it an eight out of ten because really in truth um with the voice acting and with the text boxes, it's easy to read. There's not really complex words other than the names of the fossils and stuff that you pick up. And all around, it's just a good, it's just, all around, it's pleasing. Okay, here, you're gonna talk to me about, uh, the plesiosaur. Here's a little bit of information for you guys. You guys can pause it and read it if you'd like. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to make a donation, and we're going to give him a fish that I had caught previously, which is a little calm fish. And we're just going to skip through this talking because he says the same thing every time. So blah, 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 blah. I'm a bit busy right now, so... Okay. Alright, guys. So let's take a second and let's walk around the museum, because this place is like... For instance, Hermione's purse or the tent in Harry Potter, when it looks like a regular tent, but then you walk inside and it's a lot bigger. Mind you, you guys remember how big the museum looked from the outside. Let's just go check out my favorite part right now, my aquarium. This place has an entire aquarium built into it for fresh water, salt water, and deep water. So here's my fresh water area, okay? Every single fish you guys see, I have caught. So we go through and you can check them. All the different things that you've collected through going through this. Um, you come over here and you can see the fish, crawfish, there's a snapping turtle up there that I've caught. And you catch these all with your fishing pole. All sorts of things that are going to end up going in here. I'm not really sure what's going to go in this big tank yet. It doesn't tell you that. But there's so many things that go into this. Here's some more fish that I've caught. We're going back here and we're going to go and check out this. So there's three rooms to each section. So there's the, like for instance, the aquarium. Freshwater. Here's my saltwater aquarium. And then you have um, the uh, deep sea area as well. So we'll just run up here. The little sea butterflies. My nice aquarium here that has my clownfish in it. And these will soon, as I'm ex suspecting, will soon fill up completely full of fish as you're collecting them. And you will have tons to show off. Let's go run over here and check out the last room that's in the aquarium. The deep sea stuff. Okay. 
So in here is where all of your deep sea and larger fish are going to end up. Like for instance, that's a bunch of anchovies in there and another type of fish that's in there that I'm not really sure what it is, but it's, it's in there. Come down here, here you have my ore fish that was very large that I caught, which would look absolutely ridiculous, but if you go on the stream you can actually watch me catch that one. So that's cool. Alright, let's get out of the aquarium. Okay, so here we are back inside the main atrium of the museum. Now, really quick here, I just want to point out something else that I like about this game is this little phone. This is your, not your inventory, but your like system screen, okay? So you're able to use this for multiple things. You have this Nook Miles thing, which is like another form of currency. These little missions that you get in here are super addicting and you spend a lot of time working on them. But to go over really what I want to go over is this Critopedia thing. This is just what I wanted to show you guys. Look at all of the different things in this game that you can catch for fishing and then all of the different insects that you can get as well. Now, I haven't even scratched the surface and I have been playing this game for like five days. So there is a lot to do in this game. Let's go over and check out the bugs really quick. I'm just going to go into one room of the bugs just to kind of show you guys what that looks like. And then I'm going to go hit the fossils really quick and then we'll um, come out and we'll check out a couple more quick things. So inside here, like the aquarium, I mean, this is just where a bunch of bugs are going to be. As you can see, there's a butterfly flying around up there. Um, at some point, there'll be some fish that are swimming around in this pond here. And uh, yeah, just going all around. Oop, there's a, a beetle that's that happens to be hopping around over here. You see him? And uh, yeah, so that's kind of, and there's a bumblebee right there. But this is just the bugs area of it. There's three areas to this as well, um, like nighttime bugs, butterfly exhibit only, and then that one, which shows a bunch of different random bugs that are in there. I'm not really sure what all else is going to be in there because there's so many bugs in, in this game that I haven't gotten to yet. And it's just, there's so much to this game. There's so much to do. There's so much to have fun with in this game. Okay, here's the little museum area. I just wanted to bring you guys back and show you the dinosaur exhibit because this one I believe is like the coolest. They must have spent a long time putting out the artwork for this because in the game, look at my little guy. He is very cartoonish. He's very happy. The whole entire environment is all cartoonish. But then you come into here and you have almost real life looking skeletons of dinosaur bones all around for your person to view. And these is just, this is just some of the collectibles that are inside of this game for you to get. So this is just one example of how rich and how big this game is going to be. Or it is, actually. Not going to be. What it is. Here we are back outside of the farm again, of the museum. So what we are going to be looking at now is running around and just showing you guys a couple more quick aspects of the game. Uh, we'll just do some fishing here. I'll catch a fish here really quick just to show you guys. It's really super easy. If I can actually catch it, what you got to do is you got to drop the little bait in front of their face. Okay. And he will swim up to it at some point if he wants it. If you have it in the right spot. There he goes. He's looking at it. He dips a couple times and then he goes down and then you catch the fish. And I caught a louse. A loach. I caught a louse. I caught some lice. No. I caught a loach. Oh, and then... What do you know? My tools break. So that's another thing that's with this game is it keeps you constantly crafting. It keeps you constantly moving, rotating through tools. And whoa, what up, dude? This must be my new neighbor. He's super chill. Anyway, so yeah, that's just uh, that's a basic rundown of how the tools and everything in the game works and how fishing works. You start on your own island. You get to pick between multiple islands for yourself and whatever you want to play on is what you have. And then you have your customization options, and this game is just, overall, it's a fun game. Ooh, a message in a bottle. That guy I put in my pocket for later. Anywho, then we come over here, you have your Dodo Airport, Dodo Airlines. Uh, this is how you can go and visit other players that have the game. You can go visit your friends, you can go visit online players that aren't your friends. You can have people come to your island and check out everything that you have. Or you can go to NPC islands, which are called deserted islands, and do more searching, crafting, gathering, and everything like that. And just general exploring and just getting to know the lay of the land and the area that you are now in inside of the Animal Crossing world. This game is fantastically fun, super addicting, and the only downfall that it has, in truth to me, 
is the time that they, the fact that I actually have to wait days, real life days, in order for things to happen. Like for instance, this uh, what up? What's up, Billy? That's my Billy Goat buddy. This house right here that says sold, right? That house will come in tomorrow. Literally tomorrow. Like when you see this, the next day I will have this house. So it's tw it's a 24-hour cycle in real life until things actually come in. That is the only downfall with this. What up, Billy? You seem really content about talking to me. Have a minute. Check it out. Oh, uh, we're uh, jumping jack 7,000. I got the sense of total clarity and purpose on that idea. You met Jeremiah, right? He just moved here? Yeah. We could start our own kung fu team. Apparently now there's going to be kung fu in the game. Like, that's the thing. This game keeps you jumping and keeps you on your toes with all of the new things that come into the game and everything new that you're going to be doing. Frida's the other lady. Frida is the uh, hamburger face lady. Uh, stone tablet. Okay. Frida lives in here. We're going to go check her out. And then that's going to be it. So... Let's talk about the things we've gone over so far in the game. We've talked about the graphics, on how wonderful they are. They're cute. They're... You see what I said? Hamburger face. Literally. Hamburger. Right over there. Um, at the end of the day, this game is cute. The music is perfectly fitting for this game. This game is wildly addictive. The only thing, the only downfall to the game, as I've said a few times, is the amount of time it takes to do anything in the game. But... Really, the sky is the limit when it comes to customization, comes to crafting, comes to um, gathering, comes to really doing anything that you want to do inside of this game. So, overall, I give this game a 9 out of 10 only because of the time that it takes you to actually do anything and the other small issues that we discussed in the game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I hope you guys are enjoying all around this game as a whole and I hope you guys will come back for more to see me and the rest of my videos I'll be doing on Animal um, Crossing New Horizons. It's been tons of fun and thank you everybody so much for joining me in for this and I hope you guys enjoy this game as well and as always I will see you guys in the next one.